Hi, it's Pastor Rod with Time to Get Real. Listen, do me a favor. Go get you something to drink and uh, get you a pen, get you some paper, and let's spend some time in the Word as we do another one of our segments of Time to Get Real with Pastor Rodney. Um, we are doing two different things here. This right here is for Rodney Evans Ministry or Faith Family Fellowship. And then we're gonna do try to do one of these every two weeks and we're gonna do something for Real Life Church, which I pastor every other week. So we'll be sitting down and teaching. So if you wanna follow both of those on um, Facebook, or if you just want to follow uh, Real Life Discussions with Pastor Rodney on YouTube, now, at the bottom, if you're on YouTube, I'm, it's on one of these two sides. Uh, you'll see a subscribe channel. You can hit that. Also, there's a place there. Anytime we put something on, if you hit that one button, anytime we put something new on, you'll get an alert that there's a new segment on for you to watch. Now, today, I want to go over some things. Now, this is a lot for ministers, but also for you. It's, it doesn't matter, but I do want to throw some statistics out today. Uh, about ministers. My heart is to help ministers in any way I can to be a blessing to them because I've got 30 some years of experience in in ministry and I'm a third generation minister so I saw the good, the bad, and the ugly and there is all three involved in ministry. It's not an easy thing but listen to these statistics very quickly. 90% of pastors work more than 46 hours a week. 80% believe pastoring ministry has affected their families negatively. 33% say that being in the ministry is an outright hazardous to their family. 75% uh, says they have stress-related crises at least once in their ministry. 50% are unable to meet the needs of the job. That's what they feel. 90% feel they were inadequately trained to cope with ministry demands. 70% say they have a low self-image than they did when they first started in the ministry. 40% report a serious conflict with a person in their congregation at least once a month. 70% do not have someone they consider a close friend. Uh, to me, those are alarming. Uh, so if you're watching this and you're not in the ministry, I'm just encouraging you to pray for your pastor, pray for people in your church that minister, evangelists, uh, missionaries. You need to spend some time in prayer for them because they do sacrifice a lot to, to bring the word to you. I know many times in the ministry I have, uh, been having a birthday party for my kids and get a call and I would have to leave. Uh, it's, it's a rewarding job. It's a blessing job because if you're called, it is a blessing. Um, but it is stressful. And you do have to watch who you get close to as a minister. So there's a lot of things that you need to watch. But uh, I, I want to talk about a couple things today because I'm praying for, for peace to be upon you. But we need to look at peace. We need to look and see what peace is saying. So turn your Bibles to, to John chapter 14. Let's look at John chapter 14. And we're going to look at a couple of scriptures. I'm going to take my time. But in John chapter 14, in verse 27, and again, I might go a little faster so you can stop and restart this when you find your, your scripture. Uh, John chapter 14, verse 27 says, Peace I leave you. My peace I give unto you, not as the world gives do I give to you. Let your heart not be troubled, neither let it be afraid. They say, I'm going to give you some peace. Uh, peace I leave with you, and it says, my peace I give unto you. Now, we're going to talk about peace, but I want you to look at this a little bit. Then look at John chapter 20. John chapter 20, uh, the latter part of verse 19 says, peace be with you. And then in Verse 21 of John chapter 20, it says, Peace to you. As the Father has sent me, I also send you. 
Now, I want you to hold that spot because we're going to come back, but I want you to look at Philippians chapter 1, verse, uh, let's look at verse 2 through 6. It says, grace to you and peace from God our Father, our Lord Jesus Christ. Now, I want you to understand, he says, grace to you and peace from, not just from him, but from God our, our Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. I thank my God upon you every remembrance of you, always in every prayer of mine, make a request for you, make a request for you, all with joy for your fellowship in the gospel from the first day until now, being confident of this very thing, that he who has began a good work in you will complete it until the day of Jesus Christ. Now here he's telling you grace to you and peace, then he's telling you that God started something in you and he can complete it. So I want to encourage you that if God's called you, that he will complete it, but you've got to rely on him. Now, we look at this word, peace. Now go back to John, and we're gonna look at John chapter 14, 27, and also John chapter 20, verse 19 and 21. Now, in these scriptures, I just wanna pull out that word peace. Again, he says, peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. Then in John 20, 19, he says, peace be with you. Verse 21 says, peace to you. Now, Jesus would have spoke Aramaic Hebrew is what he would have spoken. So he wouldn't have said peace. He would have said shalom. Now, shalom, I leave with you. My shalom, I give unto you. Not as the world gives, do I give to you. And also he would have said shalom be with you. Shalom to you. Now, shalom is very rich. It's, it's loaded. It's a loaded word. But when they were translating it, they did not really have a word in the English language at that time that they could transfer it over, especially like in the King James. So they used the word peace. Now, shalom does mean peace, but it means a whole lot more. And I, I want you to get this because, again, today I'm, I'm speaking peace or I'm speaking shalom over you. Shalom means completeness. See, one thing that God has me teaching on at our church and also to you today is spirit, soul, and body. So when I talk about finances, I want people to know they can, that's not just a financial blessing, it's spirit, soul, and body, and it is financial. God does want to bless you financially. But I want people to realize when I bring out those scriptures, God is concerned about every aspect of your life. Now, we might talk about that on, uh, on the, uh, in a couple of weeks on some things of financial. But here he's saying completeness, safety, soundness in body, shalom, welfare, health, pros prosperity, peace, quiet, peace used of human relationship, peace with God, especially in covenant relationship, and peace from war. Shalom. So he's speaking this over you. So you see, you've got to begin to declare this over your life. And it also, again, it, it uh, also means peace. Here, peace means freedom from private quarrels, suits, or disputes. It means peace means heavenly rest or happiness of heaven or harmony or to live in harmony. God wants you to live in harmony. God is speaking, again, let's go back and look at these words. He's saying in John 14 and 27, Shalom, I leave with you. My shalom, I give unto you. My completeness, that means every aspect of your life. So every aspect is covered. Peace in verse 20, chapter 20, verse 19. Shalom be with you, my completeness. Verse 21, Shalom to you, my completeness. And again, here we've told you it means health, it means prosperity, it means covenant relationship, it means uh, harmony in relationship with your family. I mean, there's a, a complete packed thing here that he's talking about when he says, shalom, shalom to you. So today, I'm speaking peace, I'm speaking shalom over you, especially if you're involved in ministry. 
See what it means to experience Jesus' shalom in your life? It's everything. It's completeness. God wants you, especially as a minister, he wants you blessed. He don't want you struggling, barely getting by, barely making it. He wants your relationship with your spouse to be great. He wants your relationship with your kids to be good. He wants your relationship with the people in your church to be good. It is a struggle. You're going to have to fight. You're going to have to stand your game uh, ground. You're going to have to walk by faith and not by sight. You've got to begin to confess God's word. See, the shalom of Jesus in your life is there to make you successful in your life. Jesus didn't call you and put this call in your life for you not to be successful. His desire is for you to be successful. So today, I want to let you know, especially, no matter who you are, but especially ministers, not just pastors, but ministers. But I do have a heart for, for pastors. But ministers, I want to, to speak peace, completion in every aspect. If you're struggling in one of your dimensions in your life, I want to speak shalom, completeness. And again, before we get done, I want to read those to you again. But turn your Bibles to uh, Psalms 85. Let's, let's look at Psalms 85. Uh, I, I like this, this part here. Psalm, uh, Psalms 85. Uh, let me find it myself because I'm, I'm moving around here. Psalms 85. Here we go. Psalms 85. Verse, let's look at verse. I'm going to start up here and just, uh, I like verse 8. Uh, let's start at verse 9. Verse 9 through 13. I, I want you to listen very closely. Surely his salvation is near to those who fear him. The glory may dwell in your land. Now listen, mercy means favor. And truth, it means establishment, establishment, faithful or righteous have met together. Righteousness and peace have kissed or touched. Righteousness and peace. Shalom have meet together. Then he goes on and says this, because God, again, wants to bless you, spirit, soul, and body. Goes on and says this, yes, the Lord will give you what is good. That word good means beautiful, favor, wealth, and prosperity. And our land will yield, that means to show or deliver up, his increase, that means his, his wealth or his produce, or you could say healing if you wanted to. Righteousness will go before him. It means right or prosperity. And you shall make his footsteps your pathway. Now here again, he is talking to us. He is telling us that he is going to do some special things here. I believe that this church thing is supposed to be increasing, this blessing spirit, soul, and body supposed to be increasing in our life. And I want to show that to you very quickly. Look at Haggai. That's how I pronounce it. Everybody pronounces it a little different. It's H-A-G-G-A-L. Turn there and let's look very quickly at uh, Haggai 2, verse 9. 2, verse 9. Well, let's, let's look at a little bit more than this. Let's start with uh, verse 7. And I will make... I, and I will shake all nations, and they shall come to the desire of all nations. I will fill this temple with the glory, saith the Lord of hosts. Now that word glory, the word glory means heavy in every good thing. It means splendor. It means the anointing. It means power. It means abundance. It means wealth. It means brightness as the moon in a dark day. It means fame. It means honor. He wants to bring the glory of God into your life. And it goes on and says this, the silver is mine and the gold, saith Lord of hosts. Now, verse seven, I, I wanna look at this a little bit more, then we're gonna jump down some more here. It says, and I will shake all nations and they shall come to desire all nations and I will fill the temple with the glory, saith the Lord of hosts. Now listen to the message translation. And I will shake down all the godless nations. They'll bring bushels of wealth and I will fill the temple with splendor. He's going to fill it with the anointing. He's going to fill it with the splendor of God. He's going to spend it with heavy and every good thing. It goes on and says this. Look at verse nine. The glory of the latter, the what? The glory, the splendor, the and, uh, heavy and every good thing, the anointing, 
the power, the gifts, the fruit, the brightness of the moon, the abundance, the wealth, the fame, the glory of this temple, of the latter temple, shall be greater than the former, saith the Lord of hosts. And in this place, I will give you shalom. I will give you peace, saith the Lord of hosts. In other words, he's saying this thing is supposed to intensify. The end is supposed to be better than the beginning. Now, the Message Bible, I like what how it reads in verse 9. Listen to this. It says, the temple is going to end up far better than it started out. Glorious beginning, but even a much glorious finish. A place of which I will hand out wholeness and holiness. I'm going to hand it out to you. It's going to happen for you. So I just want to encourage you today to realize God has some big things planned for you. Now here, he says it's going to be greater. Greater means uh, mighty, means more mighty than what it was. A proud thing. And here this word peace means favor, prosperous, health, safety, rest, or perfect. I'm going to bring peace. I want to speak shalom over you today. I want to speak peace over you today. I want to encourage you, the believer today, and especially you, the minister today. God loves you. Now, again, shalom. Peace be with you, shalom. Peace to you, shalom to you. Shalom be with you. Shalom Ali with you. My, Jesus says, my shalom I give to you. Again, that word shalom means completeness, safety, soundness in body, welfare, health, prosperity, peace, quiet, peace with God, especially in covenant relationship, and peace from war. Also, it means freedom from private quarrels, suits, or disputes, heavenly rest. Aren't you happy for that today? Also means the happiness of heaven. I know as I grew up, we saw, sung that song, we all get to heaven. What a day of rejoicing that will be. That's true. Uh, there's many people there that I can't wait to see. But here he's saying shalom. He's saying peace. He's saying, in other words, the happiness of heaven here on earth. You're the ambassador of heaven. You should be happy while you're here. It means harmony. So today, I'm speaking that over you. Whatever you're going through today, Father, I pray for every single person that's listening. I pray for every minister. I speak shalom over them. I speak peace over them. I speak completion over them. Lord, I thank you that you're moving in their, in their spirit, Father, that they're, they're hearing you more clearly. They're doing more what you desire for them to do. Father, right now, I'm praying for them that they, their finances are growing, Father, so they can enjoy time with their family, vacations, Father, without struggling to go, Father. They can go to ministers' conference, Father. I speak, Lord, healing into their bodies, Father. I declare as they preach the word, they walk in healing, Father. As they go to church, I speak healing in their bodies, Father. I declare spirit, soul, and body, the completion, the shalom, Father, the peace of God over them. Lord, I speak right now that you move in their life and that you transform them by the hand of God today, Father. And Father, we pray this in the name of Jesus and we declare the goodness of God over them. Listen, I love you. I'm praying God's best to be yours. He is doing so many things today for you to transform you and to change you. The Bible says you're changed from glory to glory. Isn't that exciting? Listen, God don't want to leave you the same. But also, listen, he's called you. He equipped you. If you're going to church, and hopefully you are. If you're not, you need to find a good church to get involved in. And you need to go where God leads you. Maybe not necessarily where you want to go, but you need to be where God has sent you. And you need to get behind the person who is passionate you there, your shepherd, and encourage them and help them, making sure they don't have to mow the grass, make sure that they don't have to clean the church. Let them spend time in the Word and bring forth a fresh word for you. Listen, I love you again, and I'm pray, praying for you that God will bless your spirit, soul, and body. Until next week, may God bless you, is my prayer. Thank you for listening today. And again, like our YouTube channel, we appreciate you. God bless.